What's going on guys, my name is Youngster Japan and I'm back again with another UU team match. You know the drill, same team as last time. And I'm actually against the guy that I found on the Smog and Wi-Fi Battle Finder. And it's actually kind of weird, we um, we exchanged Skype addresses for the battle. And um, well I went to add him then, uh, it turned out that I'd already had him on Skype. And um, we'd actually been speaking earlier on in the week, so that's definitely kind of weird uh, before the match had even got started. But either way, it's still a great battle i got here um, against a really good... Uh, Pokemon Battler. So his name is GK Wack. Um, I have no idea whether I said that right. Apologies if I have said it wrong. Uh, but he actually goes by the YouTuber name of Axel Crimson. He's a great Pokemon Battler. Which you can see uh, him making some great predictions. Um, so you should definitely go check out his channel if you want to see some some intense Pokemon battling. Um, so yeah, I'm at this team preview now and I'm seeing that he's got the Tornadus and Heracross which um, are definitely going to hit hard. With a Heracross getting that stab. Um, super effective close combat off on my... Um, Snorlax and my Paragon hit him super effective damage, as well as the Hitmon top, which is going to be hard hitting um, as well. Um, the Tornadus can hit hard as well, um, but I'm fairly confident that my Zapdos can take that on. And um, but again, the Milotic is going to be an absolute tank to try and uh, get around. So I end up leading off with my uh, Killer Queen as normal, uh, try and get my Stealth Hooks up. Um, so now I don't think I've actually had one battle I've uploaded where I've got Stealth Hooks up on the first turn. And you can see that my Nid Queen is the only stealth rocker and he leads off with his Milotic that can check that fairly nicely. Uh, so I know that I don't really want to take a skull, so I switch out into my Thor that can hit for the super effective damage, but he ends up predicting that very nicely and goes to Ice Beam on the switch, which is going to hit my Thor right in the face really hard. Um, I'm still going to do way over half, so I'm just going to Volt Switch out there. I'm looking at this damage and I'm guessing that this is going to be more physically defensive um, Milotic. So I know that my Zabdos can definitely 2 hit KO it, so I get onto my Slowbro now. And I was contemplating whether I wanted to go for the Toxic or not, uh, because of the Milotic having that Marvel Scale ability, which adds another 50% onto his defense that when inflicted with the status condition. But I figured um, I might as well try and go for the Toxic, um, kind of limits his uh, recovery process as well as uh, his ability to stay in. But um, <laughs> I fucking miss with the Toxic, and I'm like, bro, what are you doing? I swear that's the second battle you've done that now. And um, he predicts it's very nice now, I don't want to try and over predict, so I go for Toxic again. As he brings out his Clefable, which is going to have that Magic Guard ability, um, and take no damage from the Poison damage. So, um, I'm going to try and switch out now into my Snorlax, knowing that if this is an offensive Clefable, it's probably going to be special, um, and it can't really touch my uh, Snorlax that does have a lot of special defensive bulk anyway. And he goes for Witch, which tells me this is more defensive Clefable, uh, as I'm able then to get a free return off on where he switches in, which turns out to be this Rose Raid, which gets straight up Oko's. Uh, you know, Rose Raid has been banned from UU in the Pokemon Online tier, but that proves to be not a problem whatsoever for my choice banded to Snorlax. She so brings out this hit on top now, and I know that I don't want to take a close combat, so I get into my Duemma to um, take I predicts the switch again very nicely, uh, and goes to Toxic, which again is going to limit my um, ability to recover HP. Uh, through leftovers after I'm able to set, set up a sub. Knowing that this hit on top can't touch me at all, uh, he's going to go for the switch now. I'm going to set up a substitute in his face um, uh, on the switch. Um, so now I figured I could definitely go for a uh, focus punch now being sat behind the sub and he switches back back now into his hit on top. I don't know whether that was to try and take the um, focus punch a bit better, maybe, but um, you can see later on. Um, but this hit on top doesn't take the focus punch very well at all, which does just over half, uh, which is probably going to be a two hit KO. And um, knowing now that this hit on top is probably going to die in the next turn, he decides to switch his three way back out into his beauty that can um, take the focus punch a hell of a lot better. Um, this is a Iron Fist boosted focus punch from a max attack Golurk, and it doesn't even do half to this Milotic, which tells me this is definitely a physically defensive Milotic. Um, and you know, it's only been three or four turns now, and I'm already below half HP after toxic damage has taken its toll. So um, I decided to switch out my Snorlax now, knowing that I can't really touch this Milotic, and I'm probably going to die to the um, to the toxic damage. So I'm predicting to recover and then take, use that to get a free turn to switch out into my Snorlax, uh, fearing the Skull Burn. I decided to risk that. Uh, fortunately, don't get a burn, and I'm then able to fire off every turn, which does. A hell of a lot more damage, it's definitely a 2 hit KO on this thing, and he knows that my Milotic is going to die um, if, to another return, so he decides to switch back now into his Hitmontop, um, and then gets the Intimidate off, 
which uh, lowers my attack to minus one and allows it to just about live the uh, return. And that minus one attack has made a lot of difference, um, which is then able to hit him on top to just survive. So now I go into my Dwemer uh, predicting the close combat, not wanting to win predict and try and stay in. Um, and here I make one of the stupidest plays I've ever made. Um, I then predict him to switch his hit on top out, and then I then go for the focus punch on the switch. But he turns out he has a stone edge, which is able to hit me, um, stop me from being able to get a focus punch off. And um, he's now getting leftover recovery, and then this hit on top does survive. I could have taken it down now with any other move. Uh, the earthquake or the shadow punch would have easily taken out the hit on top from that low enough amount of HP. But instead, he stays in, hits the stone edge, and is then able to kill me off the following turn. So, that was a terrible play on my half, but I'm now able to switch back now into my hit on top, uh, into my hit on top, into my god of lightning, sorry, uh, who can revenge kill off with the thunderbolt. And um, he goes out now into his tornadoes. Uh, I'm thinking now that he doesn't think I'm Scarf, so I'm going to stay in, go for the thunderbolt, thinking that I can no -co, and he just about lives, and I'm like, that's a focus sash, that's a late game sash, but it's not, and he lives with like negative 3 HP, and then he hits the hurricane on the following turn, and takes out my Zapdos. I was raging so much, but it was a double down in the end, as he uh, dies to life or recoil, um, so I'm not really going to complain, but now I have nothing to try and take on as my Lottie, so I'm kind of fucked in that sense, but... So I go back now into my Nidor Queen um, to try and get my Stealth Rocks up, but he switches now into his Mine Lofty, which checks my team fairly nicely, and then gets a crit um, with the Ice Beam as I switch into my Paragon. And um, here is the turn, which kind of turned the game around as I trick the Choice Specs onto the Milotic, which now means that the Milotic is now locked into the next move he goes for. And fortunate enough for me, he goes for the Recover, meaning that he can't now attack me with any other move that he now has to switch out. and. Uh, let try and let one of his Pokemon try and take a uh, modest max attack, tri attack from this uh, adaptability Porygon. So he decides now to bring out his Heracross to try and take that. And um, this definitely surprised me. Uh, <coughs> sorry. It only just does half damage on the Heracross. Um, and I'm thinking now maybe that this is a more um, bulky Heracross with the Moxie ability. Um, just trying to help him sweep. Um, as then goes to the Meghorn and he switches out. And I don't see any leftovers or life orb um, recoil or recovery. So I'm presuming now that, that Heracross is choice in some way. And um, either way, my Nether Queen can take any hit from the Heracross. Uh, so I just fire off 8 Earth Power on whatever he decides to switch in. Which turns out to be the Clefable. And looking at the damage, it's definitely going to confirm that this is a specially defensive Clefable. Um, so he goes for the Wish now, predicts that, and take that to get a free switch into my Snorlax. And I'm then going to just spam uh, the A button on the uh, return from this um, from the Bandit Snorlax. Uh, he then switches in his Heracross, is definitely going to die. Um, so that's then the two huge threats taken down that can take on my Snorlax. And um, I'm thinking from here, it's near enough good, uh, good game. As I can uh, basically stall out uh, the rest of his, um, the remaining two Pokemon. Uh, which is his Milotic and the Clefable, and I think I still have four left, I'm not too sure. Um, I am recording this before I've done the Photoshop layout, so apologies if I said that wrong. Um, again, I want to try and get the Toxic off on the uh, Milotic, and just try and stall this thing out with my Slowbro, but instead he um, predicts that again very nicely and goes out into Clefable. Now I'm going to predict the Wish again, and uh, we just kind of got a little circle going on as I take the opportunity to freely switch in my Snorlax uh, as he goes for the Wish and just hit something hard with the return. And he actually goes for the Seismic Toss and um, having such a huge HP stat, um, I know I can definitely take um, at least four of those, uh, uh, sorry, at least I can take four Seismic Tosses um, with the Seismic Toss be the move that does, um, it does the amount of damage equivalent to the user's level. and because they're all Pokemon at level 100 on Wi-Fi, that means that the Clefable is going to hit for 100 damage each time. But, um, yeah, nothing much is really happening. I'm able to kill off the Clefable in the end after taking a couple of Seismic Tosses and is now left to his last Pokemon, which is his Beauty. Um, it's on full HP and now I see that he's locked himself into the skull. I decide to let my um, Snorlax die just to try and speed up the battle slightly. 
uh, smack the thing in the face with the return, uh, but again it gets the HP back after being able to get the wish off uh, with the Fable. So the Snorlax has now died, um, and I know that I can just store this thing out with the uh, with the Snorlax just by going for the Toxic um, and then watching its HP slowly die, and then being able to slack off if need be. But um, so yeah, that's near enough. That's a good game. Uh, Axel, uh, it was a great battle in the end. I found uh, it was really intense. I was thinking that I was going to absolutely dip after the first couple of turns with my opponent making all the right predictions. And with Milotic being such a tank to try and take down, but um, as I said, when I went for the trick with the Paragon, that was the turning point of the game. And um, yeah, I think that that one move uh, definitely led to led to my victory. So. Um, yeah, again, not, not much is really going to happen. We're just going to, you know, chuck some hot water at each other. Uh, he's eventually going to get the burn off on me. Um, which I think is this turn, maybe. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, I'd like you to take a moment and just look at the little burn animation I got going on with the Photoshop layout. Um, as a, definitely doing stuff like that it takes a lot longer to try and edit. Um, but. Again, I think it looks a lot better for you guys to try and watch. So, um, as I said, he ends up getting a critical hit here um, with the final skull, which means it's going to be a double down. I think it's only a 2-0 win uh, over Axel, but yeah, that's a good game, Axel. And um, yeah, I really hope you uh, enjoy this battle. So, don't forget to like the video uh, if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment um, if you like bananas. I'm holding a banana right now, so yeah. Then tell me the best experience you've had with a banana, uh, sexual or just with food, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, my name is Junkster J Pal. Like, subscribe, favorite, do all that good shit, and uh, I'll see you later. Thanks.